in respect of time. But, I will uh, be glad to speak to you privately if you wish. Well, hopefully it's a brief question. Um, I just recently been introduced to your work, so I've read several of your works, but um, I'm finding something that I feel is not adequately addressed, but it's kind of reflective of the sure. church at large. I don't think the church is um, really addressing it adequately. Mm -hmm. But essentially the question I would ask you in the context of transformation is what role does the social development have? In other words, what are we to do this alone? Is this an independent thing? Or are we to do this with our fellow believers? Well, briefly, you can't do it alone. Um, and that's partly because you are essentially a social being. And what needs to be rectified in you or me is uh, our social reactions. Uh, for example, uh, socially, most people are fearful of others in some degree. The proverb says, fear of man brings a snare. And you might just think for a moment of how much religion is actually practiced out of the fear of men. So uh, the changes required are essentially social. And uh, this is a, uh, such an important issue because so many people think that if you're going to concentrate on discipleship and spiritual development, you're going to desert evangelism, outreach, and so on. Um, you know, if you do spiritual transformation in the pattern of Christ, you will not be able to prevent outreach and mission and care for the poor and all of these things. So it can't be done alone. Uh, we are essentially social beings, and that's why Jesus lists right along with heart, soul, mind, and strength, love of neighbor. Now, love of neighbor, again, is essentially social. And who is my neighbor? My neighbor is the person next to me. And those are often the people in church with me. And learning to love others in church is a huge project. Um, I sense some recognition. <laughs> I often, people often ask me, they say, since you're so smart, why are you still in church? And I say to them, well, you know, Christians are supposed to love their enemies, and they'll find a few of those at church. <laughs> but actually, that's true. You see, the church is a place where when we get in a tight spot, we shouldn't leave. For that reason, sometimes there are reasons for leaving and going to other work and so on, so don't misunderstand me. But our reason should never be, well, I'm mad at so and so. That is the opportunity to work out this dimension. And believe me, is it challenging? And that means that we have to know one another better, get to know one another better. And very often our churches don't allow us to get to know one another very well. So maybe we have to make a special point on this. I've included in my last book, Knowing Christ, a section on how to go to church. Because this is so important. The church is a school of love. It's where we go to learn how to love our neighbors and our neighbors are, first of all, our families. And then we go back into the home and bring the healing that has happened to us in community. And then we step out of the home into our political, our social arena and live there as persons of truth and love. And that, my dear friends, is what the world is dying for. The, the real challenge facing not only the church but the world today is whether or not the Christians will become disciples and in becoming disciples become Christ-like and in becoming Christ-like lead the world by example and power that comes from God and not from human sources. It's absolutely essential to get out of that attitude of attack and withdrawal that I mentioned and to move into the area of love and coming together. Thank you. 
Let's thank uh, Dr. Willard again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, be before I close our time uh, today in prayer, I just uh, point out to you some upcoming uh, events of the Henry Center. We've got in November the Timothy series uh, uh, beginning or the next session of the Timothy series and the scripture and ministry seminar will pick up again in January. Uh, and for those of you that did have questions remaining, I know there were a couple of you over there. Uh, Dr. Willard would be glad to, to visit with you after, and any of you others as well. Why don't we please stand, and we'll close in a word of prayer. Father, we are grateful this day for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're thankful for his finished work on the cross. We're thankful for the application of that work in our lives by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, thank you that when we are birthed spiritually, we're birthed into a family. And, and this is much of what we've talked about today. And uh, Lord, we're grateful for those that, uh, like uh, Dallas Willard, who has lived and can help us think uh, through some of these important issues as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, we do pray that how Peter ends his second letter would be true in our lives. May we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you.